Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. I've got a cute little card for you, perfect for September, um, featuring the Apple Harvest stamp set and the new Perfect Partners dies. Uh, this month, Stampin' Up! has introduced uh, six different sets of dies that coordinate with stamp sets that don't have dies. So here's one of them, the Apple Blossom dies. There are so many in this set. Um, if you already have the stamp set, you can buy the dies separately. But if you haven't bought it, you can actually buy them together as a bundle and you'll save 10%. Um, these are limited time only. So if you want them, make sure you get them before they're gone. Because I definitely think you need the dies if you're going to have this set. Look, I mean, look how many there are. All right, so we're gonna make this beautiful little card. Um, we're gonna use Stampin' Blends. I've got two other projects um, that feature this stamp set, so make sure you click the link here on YouTube to go back over to my project, or to my blog. I actually have several projects, um, I think about five, to show you. Um, so make sure you stop by, back by the following week as well, because I'll have some for you. All right, so we're going to stamp our um, apples in memento black and I'm going to stamp the little blossom three times in memento black and how about we stamp the sentiment this st this stamp set has three sentiments this one is a beautiful nice little script that says the greatest gift is a good friend all right now I've stamped all of those on basic white cardstock and I'm going to use my stamp and blends to color them all right, now to color this, I'm gonna pull up my chair. I usually do this standing up, but I just color so much better when I'm sitting down and I've grabbed my glasses. <laughs> now we're gonna start with real red light. And I wanna point out to you that right here, this is very narrow. So use the bullet tip end of your stamp and blend and just go very lightly here, kind of dotting the color like this, all right? And I'm just gonna spread that color all the way down. It gets a little bit thicker down here. But then when it gets narrowed, if you'll dot your marker, your color will stay exactly where you want it to stay, okay? All right, now back here for this apple, this apple is going to be a little bit darker because it's behind the other, so that means there's a shadow cast on it. Um, you can kind of see the artist has given us an indication of where the shadow would be with those extra kind of, you know, these little digital marks here, these little hash marks. So we're going to come back in just a second with our dark stamp and blend, and we're going to add in some, um, some shadow. All right, so carefully go around and fill all that in. Okay, now I'm gonna take my dark and I'm gonna add dark right there, but then I'm also gonna add a little bit of dark here behind the leaf. Again, dark here where those marks are around this edge. And then right here under the leaf and behind that apple. All right, now I'm gonna take my light and just kind of blend it all together. It's gonna to be the lightest right probably up here and the darkest down here. I'm also gonna take a little bit of this dark and just kind of add some coming up from down here like that and like that. All right, looks good. Now, I'm using the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper and this color is Garden Green. We don't have Garden Green Stampin' Blends, but as you can see, there's a lighter color in there. So I found that Granny Apple Green works really well as a coordinating color. So again, I'm gonna take my light Stampin' Blend and add a full, just a full coating. I'm using the bullet tip in. This is my preference when I color. If I'm doing a really big open area, I'll use my brush end, but I usually use my brush end mostly for flicking color. So, you know, that's up to you. Play around, see what you think. I feel like I have a lot better control with that bullet end. All right, now I'm gonna take that dark. I'm gonna go up the center and kind of outline those lines like that. Do the same thing over here, like that. All right, now for our stem, I'm just gonna take um, dark crumb cake 
And again, with those really narrow areas, just kind of dot, dot, dot that color in there. Just kind of tap your marker so that you're getting it right in those narrow places. Like this. I feel like I have to hold my breath. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take um, Petal Pink and I'm going to add some color. Let's do, I think we're going to use the dark. And I'm going to add a little bit of color here, which would be in the middle of our flower. All right. And then I'm going to just add in a little bit here in the middle. And I think I'm going to switch to the light here on the apple. Just some kind of here like that. And then around the edge, like that. Just tap, tap, tap that color. Kind of giving it a little bit of a shadow. All right, now while we're here, let's add color to these guys, just here in the center. Like that, just kind of some messy color. There we go. All right, we are ready to cut out. So let's bring our cut and box machine. And for the sake of the video, I have already cut out the little blossoms, all right? So all we need to do is cut out our little apple cluster. Let's see if I can get it right in the right place. I'm going to add a piece of post-it tape. Hopefully that will keep that exactly where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the label. There's a beautiful little label that's come in the, that has uh, come in this set. It's long and skinny, and it fits this sentiment perfectly. All right, let's run it through. There we go, and I've got those three flowers already done. Now, while we have the cut and emboss machine here, let's um, look at our tags. I have already cut out two tags from Garden Green and Soft Seafoam um, using the tailor-made tag dies. And I'm gonna take this stitch greenery die, stitch leaves die, stitch greenery. Make sure you hop over and get that PDF that has a full supply list because I'm the worst at remembering names. You'll wanna make sure to get it right. It'll have the item number and everything. Look at that. So it doesn't cut anything out, it just adds some stitching to your project. Isn't that gorgeous? Now I have also cut out, and hopefully I didn't lose them, these little guys. I did lose them, that's why I have extras. These are also with a tailor-made tag. Here we go. Tailor-made tag um, dies, or just the little reinforcers you put here on your tags. So I did that from basic white and we're going to adhere that. These are the largest tags. The tailor-made tags dies have, I believe four sizes in each tag. So this is the largest. All right, now we're going to take some real red ribbon and we're going to just cut off maybe about four or five inches. I have this wonderful new silver threaded twine and I've cut off a piece and I'm gonna, I've unraveled the end and look, you can pull these out and we're gonna use them on our, to tie our ribbon. So take your ribbon and go through your tags like that. There we go. Now I'm gonna need something heavy to sit on my tag so that it, I can tie this. Let's see, well, if my fingers weren't sticky, that would be helpful. All right, maybe we'll fold this in half. I think I did that last time. Fold this long piece in half. And what I need is something to hold that. <laughs> I, sometimes I need four hands. There we go. Okay, we've got that. And that, if you have a friend with you, they can hold it for you. Okay, we got that one done. Let's bring over the other one. We're gonna do the same thing. Fold it in half. 
and let's put that under there like that little weights and I folded this in half so we had a double twine double um, strip of twine basically and I'm tying them as if it were just one piece so it's a little more full okay cut the ends cut the ends let's make this a little bit shorter like that if you got Tombow glue on your fingers while you were adhering those uh reinforcers probably want to go wash it off so that you don't <laughs> have that sticking to you all right we are ready to put this together i have a crumb cake card base and i'm going to put a piece of this adorable gingham cottage um, dsp right here all the supplies and the measurements will be on my blog so don't don't panic because i'm not telling you it's just easier to go print it off so that I don't misspeak and tell you the wrong thing. All right, let's adhere this one flat like this. And then we're gonna put this one overlapping like that. And I think we need to have these little red guys calm down a little bit. They're a little bit too big. So cut them at an angle. I didn't do a very good job on that one. These aren't my best ribbon scissors. There we go. Well, that wasn't an angle at all, but we're going with it. All right, so now let's bring over our apples. We're gonna put that right there. And then we'll get these guys, the sentiment. And I'm just gonna put dimensionals where it would be right there on that tag. Like that. And then we will put these three blossoms on with dimensionals as well. One, two, three. And we can have one like that. We can have one kind of tucked in like that. And then another one down here like that. And there you have it. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. Remember, these dies are only available um, for a limited time, and you definitely want to get them. If you're going to get the Apple Harvest stamp, you definitely want to get those dies so there won't be any fussy cutting, and you'll have all those extra dies to make leaves and all kinds of great things. All right, hop over to my blog, grab that free PDF, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.